Hi everybody, this is Angus Peacock and I'm going to just give you a very brief demonstration of how we can navigate the new Kubernetes view in the um, TrueSight uh, console. So to find the view it's very simple, it's under the capacity portion of the console, under containers, and we can find that under that is our new Kubernetes view. Now, the view is broken up into a number of logical components, but the landing page is our overview um, page. And this, what it does is give us a, um, some donut charts showing the current states and health at a glance as an aggregation of our monitored Kubernetes environment. Now, I can select different domains, so depending on the domain I select, that will change what this overview chart will look like. Currently, we don't have that much information in the environment, so I have, in fact, everything displayed here. I can also go and tag any ones that I'm particularly interested as favorites, and they become part of my view, and I can look at my favorites view for those. Now, we also have a number of first-level, top-level views as well, according to the different kinds of Kubernetes art, um, objects, as, as Pat just um, went through and explained earlier on. So we have the clusters, which is the the, the highest level, and then underneath that we have the nodes, the namespaces, the deployments, and the pods. Now we have a very nice simple logical grouping of the way we do things. If I go into clusters, for example, first, we will then do an aggregate of the different um, resource utilizations according to the different clusters we have. So we have a view per cluster. We can see here we have three clusters. And what we do is we break that down and as sub-levels, um, in terms of overall capacity, which gives us a summary view for the cluster. And then we break down for a little bit more detail for CPU, memory, storage, and we have those appropriately for the different objects that we can look at within the console according to what, whether they're applicable to the view or not. So looking at this view now, I can see that I already have an issue with one of the clusters. I can see that it's my CPU request versus um, my cap. And if I look at the far right, there is a bottleneck resource. So this is one of those things that immediately shows you what are the resources, the bottlenecks that we need to be available. So the next view, or the next um, uh, uh, screen we have after that is CPU, which gives us a little bit more detail of that. And we can see here we've got, again, for the same three clusters, we can see um, exactly where we have the issues specifically with CPU. But what's important here is we have things like, for example, days to saturation. So this is where we can immediately see if we are going to be reaching saturation at a certain point. Now you can see here that our days to saturation don't really make that much sense. It's huge numbers. That's because we've actually got just a very small time frame of data currently. So as the time frame gets longer, the calculations get more accurate. So if I drill into a specific cluster, for example, I will then get the information about the cluster, and we can see how we're using CPU, we can see our pods, memory, and storage within this. Now, with this, we can then have a look at where there's trends. We can see if we're about to hit, for example, our CPU limits, and um, we've got an immediate idea of where the issues are. I've also got information on configuration details for each cluster, so it tells me the maximum number of pods, the version, um, the real memory that's available, number of CPU cores that are available within the, the cluster. So these are our physical configuration limits that we know that we can actually manage within a specific cluster. If I go up a level again, we can see as well as CPU, we have views of memory, and it shows us where we're going to get specific memory bottlenecks in the future in, with the specific cluster, and storage. And this is where we look at persistent volumes with the storage. And um, we can see we've already got one that's reached saturation. So we have one where the allocated, uh, the used capacity, or the capacity we've utilized versus what's allocated is 100%. And uh, we certainly have some issue with this. So if I drill into that to have a look why that should be the case, I go over to the storage for the cluster, and I can immediately see what the issue is. If we look at this, we can see our storage size is one megabyte. Our allocated usable space is also one megabyte. And then there is our problem. We've allocated a tiny, tiny bit of storage. But it illustrates that we actually can get a, um, a high-level alert when we have issues. Now, 
we can configure behind this there are default thresholds which will tell us when we actually have issues so that we will color code at that higher level um, the information um, of where we have issues so so for example what point do we want this to become a red alert um, if I drill into a cluster into more inf for more details um, we can also see that from the cluster viewpoint I can switch to other things I can do things like an image analysis I can look at the nodes in the cluster so from a, a cluster view I can also what are the nodes that this cluster supports and you see what it's done is it's automatically switched me to of our top level view it's now switched to our nodes view rather than our clusters view and I can now see the individual nodes I can see where the bottlenecks are and I can do similar drill downs I can drill down into individual nodes where we have have issues this is what we see here is the summary view again and this is what I really like about the way this view works is that we have a very very consistent way of showing capacity CPU memory etc for each of the different objects so we always know exactly where we are and where we need to be and I can do exactly the same kind of drill downs and I can drill down into an individual node and I get information about that particular node in the same way CPU and memory we've seen how it applies to different objects but the concepts are, are, are very similar in the same way we also do days to saturation and so forth so we can see here we've got a problem with CPU memory use sorry on this particular one um, and although we've got a problem with memory used it's actually a very flat graph because it's still calculating, calculating nearly 40,000 days to saturation so this is normal behavior in other words um, we also have namespaces and these are as a Pat described earlier namespace is like a, a, a virtual cluster and we get the same breakdown now it gives us almost more of a business type view of what we're seeing so we can see is it finance is it the finance namespace is it our default and so forth and we can see the information on that I can also filter these by clusters specifically so I can say I want to see what the namespaces as they apply just to a specific cluster we get again the same view against capacity CPU memory and so forth we can also look at the individual deployments and again it's giving us now something that shows us a little bit more about what the applications are that we have and then finally um, a quick look at pods so a pod really is a higher level of container abstraction so if you think of a you would run a container on a VM or on a server and that container can then run multiple units a pod consists essentially of one or more containers and um, that could be docker or others and they are basically guaranteed um, within that pod to be co-located on the same host machine and to be able to share resources on that and that's, and that's really the principle of how how a pod works and again we have the same very very powerful filtering ability where we can select namespaces we can say exactly which one we want to view and I can apply that and then I can see the individual pods for that specific namespace on that particular cluster and then I can also narrow it down according to deployments and we can say let's do supermarket perf test and then it would give us just those specific areas and obviously the ability to then drill in and get the information about any specific pod and that really in summary is how you navigate the new Kubernetes view it's very very easy it presents the information you need to see in the way you need to see it and of course it's got all the same facilities that are available with um, the presentation server the HTML5 views that we have such as saving images and so on and just in conclusion underpinning all of this there is in fact a according to uh, using the Maviri um, ETL there is the hierarchy is automatically created from our um, Kubernetes environment so in fact you can do all the other analyses and things that you might need to do within that within the capacity optimization console